The opening few days after the start in Cherbourg were tricky for all four fleets in the double-handed Transac Jacques Vab. Crossing the Bay of Biscay is always a challenge, and the route down the Portuguese coast was anything but straightforward. For some, like Bureau Valet and 11th Hour, disaster struck early as both were dismasted. But for the bulk of the fleet, the big issue was getting through the doldrums. The problem started with light conditions out in the Atlantic that left a narrow corridor of breeze close to the African coast for the fleet to squeeze through. And it wasn't easy for anyone. Alec Wilkinson picks up the story after five days of racing. Thursday the 11th of November for the All Teams is spent rounding islands. First Madeira, then the Canaries, and the jibes are numerous as the fleet heads west. But Sedebo appears to be slowing down. More on that in a moment. By contrast, Gitana's speed is obvious as Frank Camas and Charles Caudrelier press the pedal and almost double their lead in 12 hours. By evening, they're over 95 miles ahead of SVR Lazatique and 160 from Banque Populaire and Actual. Then comes confirmation that Sodebo has been in trouble for several hours. On a heurté violemment. Something hit the starboard foil hard. It was a violent impact. Tom flew through the boat. He's battered and bruised today. We're going to stop in Madeira to see if our technicians can put the foil back in a position where it doesn't damage the hull. To remettre au moins the foil in a position in which it continue to endommage the coque. We have not taken the ponge because. We haven't thrown in the towel because we want to see if it's solvable first. And then if the weather allows us to rejoin the party. After repairs by the shore team who'd arrived on site in record time, Coville and Ruxel set off again at dawn, 500 miles behind Gitana, 200 behind fourth placed Yves Le Blevec on Actual. In the Ocean 50, Coesio has maintained a steady pace, with Owen LaRue and Xavier Macaire going full steam ahead. Behind them, Solidaire on Peloton is more than 20 miles away, and Primonial 50. But the passage through the Canary Islands promises to be torturous. The Amoka boats are making the most of the downwind conditions. The top six have increased their lead, but behind them the battle is raging between the older boats, some of which have smaller foils and are therefore not as fast. They're 180 miles from the front of the race, but are fighting at every cross, amongst them Yannick Bestarven, Damien Seguin and Giancarlo Pedotti. Look at Prismian Group in a great Portuguese breeze. Boats fast. Look at the view. We just have to keep going straight ahead, that way. On the outskirts of Madeira for the first time since leaving Le Havre, Thomas Rouillant on linked out and Jeremy Bayou on Chiral managed to get into the lead when Apivia went too far east. Thursday at midday, the Class 40s finally reached Cape Finisterre. A group have decided to take a more western route, hoping to find breeze generated by the low-pressure system that's approaching. Meanwhile, at the head of the fleet, the gaps are very small, positions keep changing, and for the first time since Brittany, La Banque du Le Mans, Volvo and Eden Red pull into the lead. But only 18 miles separates the first five boats. More than 200 miles away in 32nd position, the Courtois twins are smiling again. Hi, look, we're reaching. We deserve it after having no win. It was tough with no sleep. But we're happy and we're with our friends on Freedom just ahead of us. This morning, whilst we were really depressed at still having no win, we found a lovely surprise in our boat. 
Our parents made us a little book with lots of photos and messages from our friends. Thank you, thank you. Saturday morning and the rankings look like this. Gitana leads the all teams ahead of SVR and Banque Populaire. Primonial has taken the lead from Coesio and Solidaire on Peloton in the Ocean 50. In the Amokas linked out, Apivia and Chiral are fighting for first place. And the Class 40s leaders are all incredibly close. It's like a reality show. There are new developments every hour, every day. I love the mixed performance of the boats because the lack of wind makes the fight much more equal in the end. The maneuvers and strategic decisions over the next few days will tell us how cautious the crews are being. I think they will have got really tired on this route south. If the doldrums are also tough, then it'll be interesting to see how crews survive long term. The crews of the all teams, Ocean 50 and Imoka boats are now focusing on how to cross the extensive and notoriously tricky doldrums. It'll take clever strategy and skill to get through before the big right-hand turn across the Atlantic and the final sprint to Martinique. Slow sailing will soon be a thing of the past for Frank Camas and Charles Cadrelier as the pair prepare to enter the Southern Hemisphere. We're finally exiting the doldrums. As the chasing pack has now closed in, everything's still to play for. In each class, the competition is intense. The leading class 40s have just left the Canaries, a passing visit with no time for sightseeing. The lights behind us are Tenerife. We're almost in the port. We'll have to jive. Shall we stop? We don't have time. I don't know. Behind the leader, the Ocean 50s appear to be racing in pairs. The doldrums, though, may yet shuffle the pack. The doldrums are complicated this year. Our easterly position could be good, but we can't be sure yet. It's neck and neck at the front of the Imoka fleet, as we see here with Chiral and Linked Out, an impressive speed test session between the two foilers. At the back, the fight is just as intense. We're going to try to catch Apicil. They're fast, but we'll try. The Amoka's next target, the Cape Verde Islands. Redmond and Banque du Le Mans hold first and second in the class 40s. The Amoka podium changes with every jibe, Apivia is the most skillful at this game. Primonial is leading the Ocean 50s to the doldrums, and the all-team Banque Populaire a little further west is making up ground on the maxi Edmund de Rothschild. The countdown is on. The first multi-hulls are expected to arrive in Martinique in a week's time. While some are speeding up, others are still stuck in the doldrums. It's not fast, the exit is ahead, the sky is blue, the blue of hope. The monohulls will also need hope and patience. The first Imoca is due to arrive in Fort de France in eight days. Waiting for the final sprint, the sailors of the Transat Jacques Vabre are finally taking care of themselves. C'est l'heure de la douche. Ouais, ouais, J'espère que l'eau est pas trop froide. <laughs> oh, non, en tout cas, c'est indispensable là. Petite douche. I took a little shower. It feels good. It's been seven oh, days without one. Sept jours sans douche, quand même. Then a good meal to each his own taste. Tu fais cuire un peu de beurre. Is that Breton, butter? Of course, I'm from Brittany. Light, oh, ah ouais, light, light, light. The main thing is to do something, anything, isn't it, Clara? Here we are taking pictures of Trinidad, which we'll never see. On a fait demi tour. Frank Camas and Charles Cadrelier, leading the all teams, are closer to the Roaring Forties than to the West Indies as they 
they round a course waypoint, an imaginary mark off the Brazilian islands of Trindad and Martin Vaz. So as not to disturb the turtles and whales, the turning point is actually north of the islands. More whales, but much further north between Cape Verde and the African coast. It looks very far away, but it's not. There are several of them around the boat. You can see their breath. Whales and dolphins, every time we catch a glimpse, is magical. These are escorting Fabian Delahaye and Isabel Joshk. Not everything in the sea is as magical, though. So, what did we catch? Here's what we found. In the trade winds, the sailors of the Transat Jacques Vabre are in the kingdom of flying fish, to be enjoyed with a little lemon for dinner in the sun, or even breakfast, if conditions allow. We're in the zone making the boat go really fast, if possible in the right place. I'll try not to get splashed. Bad news in the class 40s, two pairs are out. Quito de Pavant with Gwen Gibich and Tanguy du Châtelet and Fabrice Renoir have both been forced to retire due to damage. Good news, however, for the Volvo crew, who've just regained the lead. Antoine Carpentier was right to be worried. It's getting back on track, we mustn't give up, it's going to be tough. The old teams are heading to Martinique after rounding the waypoint and are now expected at the finish middle of next week. ETA Wednesday. I'm going to bed now. Enjoy the watch, Armel. The Ocean 50 boats are on the launch pad for the West Indies, ready for an immediate takeoff. Welcome aboard the Primonial rocket. We've passed Fernando de Noronha and are now heading for Martinique. The skippers of the Transat Jack Vabra never let up, and there's nothing like a good pick me up to keep them going. It's the secret of the Transat Jack Vabra a good coffee. We're pumping. That's how you stay awake in the Transat. In the class 40, there was a change of leaders as they approached the Cape Verde Islands. The Franco-Belgian boat Volvo took pole position. In the Ocean 50s, behind leader Primonial, the fight's tight along the northern coast of Brazil. A group of three leaders in the Amocas, but they're struggling to escape the doldrums. Thomas Rouillard and Morgan Legravier are the fleet scouts. The all-team flying giants are crossing each other on the trade winds. Some are heading up to the West Indies, others are still heading down to the waypoint. The sort of morning we like, it's nice, 40, 41 knots. More than 75 kilometers per hour on the water. Speeds are going crazy in the all teams, the Ocean 50 and even the Amokas. In principle, we're out of the doldrums. For the duos in these three classes, it's the final stretch with the Bay of Fort de France in their sights. On the other hand, the class 40s are having to be patient. Transat Jacques Vabre 2021, the longest transatlantic race in history. We're sailing along Africa, but we feel like we're still in our own backyard. No time for boredom, though, in the Atlantic. Every day at sea has its own surprises. Some can have a bitter taste. It's sargassum. If the Sargasso Sea allows it, the smallest monohulls in the race are expected to arrive in Martinique at the end of the month. The opening of the Transat Jacques Vabre race village in Martinique, a sure sign the race is coming to a climax. We're happy the race village has opened and also happy to know that Martiniquans can visit the boats close up. Whilst Martinique is keen to welcome them, the sailors are keen to arrive. They'll have to be careful though to avoid the traps along the South American coast. It's fast going and the boats are suffering. The damage is multiplied. We had a problem with the Jenica which came down in the night. 
To avoid this kind of mishap, the skippers are listening to their boats. This boat needs a lot of work to keep an eye on it and optimize its performance. But it's not just about the boats, the sailors have to look after themselves too, and that may include rationing. We have 25 days of diesel, food and water. We're a bit short. Class 40s, there are still more than 10 days of racing left. In the all teams, the gap is closing between second placed Banque Populaire and SVR Lazatigue in third. In the Ocean 50s, the chasing pack is closing in on leader Primonial. The Amoka leaders are now past Fernando de Noronha and 70 miles separates first from third. The class 40s are finally pointing their bows towards the west and Martinique and Redmond is back in the lead.